Hi, David Solarbotics again. Again, we are dealing with Epilogue Laser Maintenance. Now, generally speaking, pretty good machines, quite happy with them. But like any other good machine, you have to service them to make sure that they're always happy. Today's dilemma is we're having issues with raster loss, which means as the laser is whipping back and forth and firing its laser down just to engrave the surface, uh, we're getting some lost steps. And so instead of if you can imagine, we want to raster a nice vertical line, the line is actually doing this sort of thing, and it's waving back and forth a bit. So to do that, we've got to do service the encoder strip that feeds the laser head. So we're going to start by removing the head uh, cover here. The Epilogue Legend 36 has its encoder strip covered underneath this sheet metal cover, so it keeps it away from the dust and debris. It even has this nice little sliding belt window here that does its best to keep the debris from uh, getting inside, but it still happens. So what we have to do is loosen off all of these little screws here on the cover. We don't remove them, we just loosen them off, and then we'll be able to pop it free and see inside. Okay, so the cover is off. Put it aside and you can actually see, woohoo, nice dust. Dust that gets in here and covers up the, the uh, pneumatic tube. And here on the head, that's not terrible, but it's still enough. If you can take up some dust and see it on your fingers, chances are it's also on the encoder strip. All right, so the way that the encoder works is that if you can just barely see, there's this plastic strip right down in here. And it looks like it's just a gray strip, but it's actually got a very, very fine set of lines on it, like a ruler. But I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe it's a thousand lines per inch. And they are micro um, printed on there. And it is being translucent. Uh, it being translucent means that we can run an encoder with a transmitter on one side and a receiver on the other side. It shines light through and it counts as it goes back and forth across the rail. Now I've recently learned from Epilogue that they use this setup here with the encoder strip to actually control the firing of the laser in raster mode. So it's not used for positioning the head like this. They've got a separate encoder that does that, that but they actually use the feedback for, through this system here to actually control the firing time of the, uh, the laser beam itself. So let's remove the encoder reader and have a look see at that. Okay, let's take off this reader here nice and careful like because you don't want to rub it across the encoder strip. So right here is uh, right here is our encoder reader. And as you can see, we've got a slot in here and there's already some debris in there and I'm sure that's part of the problem we're having with reading. So it's one thing to keep the encoder strip down here clean and we do that with a Q-tip and some alcohol. But the thing is, for every five or 10 times you do that, you know, you're still missing this and th this is the service you have to do to actually get in here to clean up the head. It's, you actually have to remove it and clean it. Okay, now we're ready to clean the head. Take a nice piece of paper towel, our cleaning solution, Saturate it on both sides. And just kind of like a credit card reader, you just want to squeeze it in there and gently clean it out. Because there's both the transmitter and the receiver. And I don't know if you could pick that up, but there are a few specks on there. It's hard to tell with the blue. And now that's still looking a little bit dusty in there. So after we've done that, I'm going to hit it with the uh, compressed air to make sure we blow out any other debris. Okay, compressed air. And that looks really nice. So now while we've got this off, I'm gonna give the encoder strip a nice, whoops, give the encoder strip a nice cleaning too. All right, we've got our head clean. Let's move it out of the way. Slide it to one end. And I'm gonna actually do the strip. So again, Q-tips are your friend. Nicely well-saturated cloth, a Q-tip tip. And we'll start on one side and I gently string it across. I rotate it as I go so it's, there's always a clean surface. All the way to the end. And then I flip it over and I wipe it off. 
And there, that's one side. And Q-tips, they're cheap, get rid of them. Do it again. Now this time, on the other side. Okay, I'm clean, just finished cleaning off the back side. I don't worry too much about the dirt on the end because that's picking up stuff that's on the bottom. It's the grime on the side, like that particular splotch there. That's definitely contaminants on the uh, ribbon that's going to uh, cause me some grief. So I'm glad I'm doing this now. This will give me much better rastering results when I put it back together. Okay, we've got a clean encoder. We've got a clean reader. It's time to reassemble it. Now, Eplug's done a good job in making sure that everything keys in nicely and they've got aligning screw fixtures. So I carefully bring it back over top of the ribbon. There's one cap head screw. Don't drop them down into the tray. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to fix. Pull it out. Okay. Make sure they're both sitting squarely when you tighten it up. Get a bit snug. And there we go. So now we've got clean encoder strip, clean reader. Only thing left to do is I think I'll go over and give everything else a quick wipe down in here before we put the, uh, the cap back on. And uh, we'll be ready to give it another test fire. Okay, well we got the cover off. Uh, well, let's let go over what we've done. We've cleaned the encoder strip, we've cleaned the encoder reader, we have, well, while we were here, we decided to clean up the lenses a little bit. So, in pretty good shape. Last thing to do, really, is we should relubricate the bearings a little bit. Now, what this rides on back and forth is called a linear bearing slide, and the business part of it is down underneath here, and it's a very hardened steel uh, linear ball bearing. And since this head is also whipping back and forth quite rapidly. You want to actually apply just a little bit of bearing grease once in a while to keep it going well. Now with our baby laser, it's a lot easier to apply because we can get to both sides, but this one isn't. So I kind of got to make a little bit of a mess and squish some bearing grease in here. And I can't quite get to the other side, so I'm going to just kind of like try and run a little bit down there. Get some fresh grease in there. And that's going to have to do. So I'll just put a little bit more in here and then we run it back and forth a bit. That'll help get the, uh, the linear rail lubricated. And ideally you'd want to do it on both sides but we have no real convenient way of attaching, attacking the other side. But fortunately linear bearings, they last quite a long time uh, between lubrications. So this is just a little preventative measure. While we got it open, may as well lube it up. Okay, time to put the cover back on. Last thing to be aware of is this very important cable here is what's passing all of the uh, signals back and forth from the encoder back to the uh, laser. It's very floppy because when it's whipping back and forth, as you can see, it does a lot of travel. Now, putting this back on, make sure this is tucked in nice and gentle while you're putting it on. I've had the misfortune of accidentally leaving it, poking out, putting the cover back on, and then thinking it was all good until the laser went the first time and just ripped itself against the, uh, the uh, ribbon cable and almost killed itself. Fortunately, replacement cable's not that uh, uh, expensive. It just had a laser downtime of a few days until we had a fresh cable. Careful where you put the cables when you reassemble. So, hopefully that we've been a little bit of assistance to other laser enthusiasts out there. Hope you've learned as a, a little bit from our presentation.